This video is for anybody who'd like a little bit more information or has some questions about your paper. So um, if you've read the guidelines for the paper and you don't have any questions and you feel like you're um, in good shape, then uh, you don't need to watch this. I'm not going to present any new information here. Um, I just want to elaborate on a couple of things. Um, to get started on your paper, um, you need to, you're going to be doing two interviews. Um, don't worry about the interviews yet or be thinking too much about either your interview question or anything about that. Um, but do think about two people who you might be able to interview or two age groups of people that, that you have access to that you might be able to interview. So it could be um, another student, it could be somebody in your family. Um, if you have children in the home, you might want to interview one of your children if they're old enough. Um, I don't recommend doing it with anybody under the age of say four or five at the, at the youngest. Um, but then you know, from there all the way to 100 or more, um, whoever you have access to, you're just going to do really two really short interviews. You're only going to ask them one question, so this isn't anything long. Um, so identify the ages of the people that you're planning to interview um, and then look at the chapters on uh, cognitive and socio-emotional development for those people or for those ages. Um, skip the first few chapters of the book. We're not doing any prenatal interviews. Um, go to those chapters and look at what the bolded terms are. Just sort of skim through them even if we haven't gotten to them yet. And look at some concepts that refer to how people of that age think or feel um, and pick any five, not five per person, not five per age, just any five. And your two people can be in the same age range or they could be two different age ranges. So if you're interviewing a 10 year old and a 50 year old, you might go to middle childhood um, and sort of skim through and say, oh, I think this concept is interesting. I don't know anything about it yet, but this one looks interesting. This one looks interesting. Um, and then go to the one um, on middle adulthood and say, well, for a 45 to 50 year old, um, here are some concepts that I could think of. So examples of concepts might be uh, in a younger child, centration or uh, reversibility or um, something having to do with language development. Um, for the older person, it might be um, formal operational thinking or post-formal thinking or um, you know, I, the identity versus role confusion um, uh, developmental crisis for, that Erickson says that um, adolescents typically go through. So I'll let you pick. Um, don't pick a chapter heading. Don't pick a, a, a section heading. Um, pick something within there. So, you know, narrow things work better than large things in a paper like this. Um, then submit your outline. Um, just tell me what the five concepts are and the two age ranges so that I can think about that. Um, and my only key there, the only thing that I'm looking for there is I want to make sure you're on track. I want to make sure that the concepts that you've selected will be appropriate for the kind of paper you're going to ultimately write. Um, I was always a procrastinator uh, and procrastinating can work really well and you do um, some great thinking between the time that you start procrastinating and when you write or you can, uh, but what you need to know is that at the end you have all the things ready so that the night before something is due, you don't realize that there's a key component missing and you can't complete the paper. So my job at this point is to make sure that you have all the stuff um, and you can write your paper early, you can write it on time, you can write it at the last minute, however you wanna do that is up to you. In your outline, I've structured what I think um, the, the ultimate st uh, structure of a good paper would look like. Um, you can do anything you want on your outline. I don't care what the format is, all I care about is uh, I want to know what those five terms are and those ages. Um, and I've also asked you to go ahead and put an APA uh, formatted citation to the textbook because you're going to need that in your final paper. And I'm just going to look at that and say either it's missing, um, it's there but it's not correct, um, or it looks like you're, you're all set on your APA formatted citation. So that's just sort of a, an early way to make sure that you can check the box on that one. Um, after you've gotten approval for your outline, you can go ahead and draft your paper. Um, and when you draft your paper, keep in mind that your paper is mostly about those five concepts. Um, one, things that I, one of the things that I have found students do before is they sort of are running around in circles trying to tie their people or their question to the thing they're writing about. Don't even think about that at this stage. Write about, teach to your reader those five concepts. Your reader doesn't have any idea what they are. Um, explain it in your own words. Don't use any quotations from the textbook or any other published sources. Um, if somebody sat next to you at a party and said, hey, what are you studying? And it's like, well, we're studying, you know, and then fill in the blank on that age range. And they say, well, tell me something that you've learned. This is you telling something that you've learned. Your entire paper can be in first person. Um, you don't need in-text citations, you don't need APA format, you don't need MLA format, you don't need a title page, you don't need page numbers, I don't care about the margins, I don't care about the spacing, I don't care about any of those things except for the content of your paper. Um, I used to not tell students um, what the links should be and I just said write a good paper uh, and people were not satisfied with that, they wanted an estimate. Um, and I get that, so the estimate is five double spaced pages 
A double space page is around 250 words, so you're looking for about um, 1,250 words by the time you're finished. Um, at the draft stage, you should have about 1,000 words. Um, if you don't, go back and look at what you've written and say, if you've just given them one, a one sentence definition of what um, you know, reversibility is, that's not enough, right? Explain to them why it matters and when it develops and how you know that it's developed and you know, what, you know, what it's indicative of. Is it showing growth? Is it showing stagnation? Is it, you know, what is it that, that, that's happening there? Okay, so now you've got a draft of your paper. You've got those five concepts. Now, and only now, um, go do your interview. Um, I've asked you to submit your question a couple of weeks after your outline. Um, it needs to be an open-ended question. Um, these are very short interviews, two or three minutes long. But I mean, I don't know, like maybe your person will go long. You only need the first um, maybe three to five sentences of what they say, um, the first minute or two of what they say, because that's usually what's top of mind when they answer your question. An open-ended question requires them to provide a narrative response. And so it gives you more data that you can work with when you're adding things into your paper later. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so an example of, a, of an, a question that would not work is, you know, do you like sports? And the answer is yes or no. And then your interview is done, right? You don't have anything else. Um, you need one question that you can ask to two people using exactly the same wording. They need to both understand it. So if you're picking a child and an older person, it doesn't have to mean the same thing to them, but they have to understand the words in the question without asking you what you mean. Um, so pick an open-ended question, something like, um, you know, what was your experience with sports like when you were younger? Or um, if you go to the, uh, to the page for the paper in Blackboard, there's a whole list there of open-ended questions. Most of those are appropriate for adults. If you're gonna use them with a child, think about whether the child of the age that you're interviewing would understand the wording. Um, and if not, change the wording so that they would understand it. If the child will understand it, the adult will understand it, but, uh, but it's not always the reverse. They might understand it in different ways. If you ask a child, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Um, for a very young child, it's what I want to be right now. I want to be Batman. Um, for the middle school child, they may say they're not really sure and they're referring to careers. Um, for the adult, it might mean something more global of how do I want to be viewed by, by the people around me. So, you know, it doesn't matter how they interpret it, if, you know, when you're doing the interview. So um, submit your question and also remind me of what the ages are of the people that you're interviewing and then I'll approve your question and I'm just checking to make sure it's appropriate and appropriate for those ages. Um, an example of an inappropriate question is, I've had students before suggest, um, tell me about the worst thing that ever happened to you. Um, and if you think about that, it's like somebody came in to talk to you and you're just doing a class project and now you're dredging up the worst thing that ever happened to them and then you're gonna say, see ya, bye, thanks for the interview. Um, that, that would not be ethical in regular research and there's no need to do that for a class project. We don't need to remind people of those kinds of things. So you can ask them about something memorable that happened to them. You can ask them about um, their best memory. Um, just don't ask them about their worst memory for a class project. Um, it might be appropriate for some other kind of research, but you would need to go through some ethical, jump through some ethical hoops before you uh, would be approved to do that. Um, I've also had somebody say, um, I uh, want, want to ask people, um, how did you know you were ready the first time you had sex? Um, and I declined that question because a lot of people weren't ready, right? And for, for, for some people, it wasn't a great experience. And so um, I asked them to revise it. And that's what I would do with you with a question that, that I think um, might not be appropriate is I'll say, would you consider saying something else? And in that case, what I said was, perhaps you could ask somebody how m somebody might know if they were ready to have sex. Um, and that, you know, it wasn't, still it wouldn't be necessarily my favorite question, um, but if the student was interested in that, um, then just that change in wording um, can make a question that's problematic, um, not problematic. So um, again, there's a list of, of open-ended questions. If you've got questions about those or if I can help you, let me know. Um, with both your outline and your interview question, um, you'll get a zero if you don't turn it in. You'll get a five out of 10 if you turn it in, but it needs to be revised. And you'll get a 10 out of 10 if you're good to go. Um, if you get a five, revise it and resubmit it, and then I'll change that to a 10 out of 10. And we'll do that as many times as you need to in order to, um, to get it right um, and get it approved. So again, I'm not a stickler for these things. I just wanna make sure that um, it's gonna work for you because I've seen things go wrong later in the, in the writing process, and I'm trying to help you avoid that. Um, okay, so after you've done your interview, you need to audio record it with a phone. Um, or some kind of a recording device. You need an audio, you need a word for word recording because if you summarize what somebody else says, 
what we're getting is what they said through your eyes, and we want to get what they said through their eyes. Um, so transcribe it word for word, exactly what they said. Um, transcribing takes a long time, and so part of this project is to give you um, experience with collecting data um, in an interview setting and also um, getting ready to analyze that data. Um, transcribe it word for word, but only the first, say, three to five sentences. Um, don't keep, you know, transcribing, it can take 10 minutes per minute to do a good transcript, depending on how the person is speaking. Um, so you could spend an hour uh, transcribing a 10 minute interview, and I don't want you to do that. I want you to spend 10 or 15 minutes transcribing at the most. Um, so transcribe it word for word, both interviews. It's just that one question, and it's the same question for both people. Um, don't revise the question, don't edit the question, don't paraphrase the question. Read it exactly that way. Um, if they just give you a one sentence answer, ask them, can you tell me more about that? Or is there anything else? Give them an open-ended prompt and don't say, can you tell me more about that time you went to the park? Or can you tell me more about that person you were with? Or whatever it is, don't direct them to any part of their response. Just say, can you tell me more about that? Is there anything else? And try and extend it. And usually you'll get enough. Like you really only need, you know, those first few sentences. So now you have um, a draft of your paper and you've got your interview and you've got your interview transcript in two separate files. Here's my paper file, here's my transcript file. Um, in the paper file, um, copy and paste in some quotes from your interviews. So um, you don't have to say all the ums when you do the transcript. You don't have to say what you said in the transcript. But um, look at your interview and then look at the concepts that you selected and see whether you see evidence of that kind of thinking or that kind of emotionality or that kind of an approach. Um, if you did, you know, bring a quote in and say, you know, at the end of that, at the end of that paragraph where you've taught your reader that concept, you can say, for example, and then use your quote and explain how your quote demonstrates that thing. If you don't see that thing, but you thought that you might, bring in your quote and say, here's why I didn't see it. Here, here's an example of not seeing that thing, and here's why I might not have seen it. The content of the question, you know, the, the topic of the question, parks, vacations, memories, whatever, does not matter at all. It's how they're approaching the question that's of interest to us. It's the kinds of things that are important to them and not the actual topic of that question. So use those as examples. You won't use all of them. Um, you might not have an example for all five of your concepts, but throughout your paper, look, at, look for opportunities to use a quotation from your, or to add in a quotation from your, um, from your interview as an illustration um, of that thing. Okay, so now you've got your paper and it's all done. Um, when you turn your paper in, I, I encourage everybody to go to the ILC or submit it through the Online Writing Center um, to, get, uh, to get comments. Um, it's free and who doesn't want comments and get somebody else to proofread their paper for them and give them some ideas. Um, so use that if it's useful to you and if you have time at the end. Um, when you submit your paper, you'll submit two files. One is your five page paper that is now six pages because you have a references page. Keep in mind that for APA style, that last page should be titled references and then you should have just one reference to the entire textbook. Um, and then in a separate file, you will have um, your transcripts. Um, so upload your, your paper, upload your transcripts. I don't need the audio of your interview, just the written transcript of it. Um, and then you'll be all set. So um, next week we have, uh, or coming up at some point, um, we have a discussion forum where we're going to talk about both papers and an exam review. Um, you can pose questions then or use the Q&A forum, forum excuse me, in Blackboard um, to ask any questions you've got there. So um, I hope that was helpful um, and I look forward to reading your papers. Thanks. Bye.